Yo guys, if you clicked on this video, you're probably a noob. Not trying to be rude or anything, it's just that you're a new player. And you came to the right place because I'm going to be showing you a list of 10 items that are overpowered for new players and will make your experience way more easy. And even if you are someone that's experienced and has been playing for a while, you will learn at least two new things from this video if you watch till the end. So why don't we get straight into it, huh? At number 10, we have the Snake Eye Ring. Okay, this item is busted for all players, not just for beginners, and you should have one on you at all times. Unless you have a better speedy option, like the warrior has with his helmet. Now, the stats of the Snake Eye Ring aren't anything special, it's just free speed and free decks, but it's the passive that it holds, which is insane. When you use your ability, you get a 2 second speedy, with a cooldown of 5 seconds. Speedy basically doubles your speed, and the reason why this is insane is that the movement that it provides is extremely useful. Like for example, not only does it speed up regular gameplay, but it helps with things such as getting soulbound on all of the Pentrack Towers, which can get you 5 different items and 5 gear upgrades. It also helps with getting soulbound on Oryx 1 even after killing Janus, or getting around Candyland faster. Another reason why almost every character should have this is because it's so damn common. It's like a 1 in 10 chance of this item dropping from the snake pit boss or the treasure room. So if you're maxing speed through the snake pit, which is definitely the easiest way to do so, you're basically guaranteed to get it by the time you max your speed. Okay, now number 9 is, and I promise I'm not trolling, Yep, those are the abilities that you start with whenever you create a brand new character. Okay, let me explain. If you're a new player watching this, you probably have a weak pet and your mana is unmaxed in your characters. And when you do use a higher tier ability, or a rarer one, it might even consume your whole mana bar. Tier 0 abilities are super cheap to use, and for some reason they're sometimes the most mana efficient. People already know this about the Trickster ability, everyone uses the tier 0 prism to get around, even if you're someone that used their mum's credit card to max out your divine pet. Also, one that's less known for being strong for everyone is the tier 0 tome. When you have 75 wisdom, because of the priest's wisdom modifier on tiered tomes, it kind of changes how the tier 0 tome works. The tier 7 tome heals 270 health for 130 mana, so it heals slightly over 2 health per mana. While the tier 0 tome heals 130 health for only 60 mana, which is slightly over 2 health per mana as well. T0 tome technically heals a bit more than T7 tome per mana spent, despite it being the tome you start a brand new priest with. But more importantly, it has less chance to overheal, since it heals less per spacebar, and it's also cheaper, so there's a higher chance you can use it over T7 or other tiers. You also get more of a healing buff, which heals you an additional 20 health per second. Since, for 60 mana from the T0 tome, you get 5 seconds of the healing buff, or equivalent to 100 HP, and from the T7 tome for 130 mana, you get the healing buff for 8.5 seconds, which equals 170 HP. So T0 tome is actually the best for healing, through raw HP gain, the healing buff, and more flexibility in its usage because of the lower MP cost, and also being able to proc items that require you to use your ability, and other items we'll talk about later. There are other T0 abilities that aren't as cracked, but are still respectable, that give you trade-offs to choose from. Like for example, the T0 sheaf allows you to have almost double the jumps, for the same mana cost than T5, but almost half the jump distance. Also, all quivers have the same paralyzed duration they apply to enemies, and T0 is half the cost of T7, but you do lose out on damage from the quiver and some deck stats mostly. For ninjas, when holding down your tiered ability, they all give you speedy for 10 mana per second. But, as the tier progresses, the higher tiers consume more mana when you do let go of your spacebar because they shoot out a shuriken, which deals more damage the higher the tier. Tier 7 costs more than 3 times more mana to do so than tier 0. So if you want to be more versatile with your speedy, but you're okay with losing damage from the shuriken, and with having less vitality, then you might want to use T0. The T0 trap offers you double the slow duration, but for the cost of some stats, damage, and the trap radius. So this can help with bosses that urgently need to be slowed, like for example the fungal boss. And finally, the warrior helmet does not actually offer 
more berserk or speedy for the mana that it costs if you increase the tier when you're under 50 wheels. The tier 0 actually costs the exact same per mana spent as the tier 5. And then when you do have 50 wheels, it actually becomes 15% more efficient. The benefit of using a tier 0 helm over a higher tier is that you're not forced to use more of your mana at once for more speedy or berserk than you might actually want or need. But it also does come at the cost of some defense. With all tier 0 items that I mentioned, I actually love to keep them as a swap out at least. Like for example, when I'm doing my hardcore player experience series where I can't nexus or use a pet, Highly recommend checking that out by the way after this video. I prefer using the T0 Tome when I'm Max Wiz, T0 Helmet, T0 Prism, and T0 Sheath. But since the Snake Eye Ring also exists, and because T0 abilities can be more than 3 times cheaper than the maximum tier, you want to keep a T0 ability on you at all times just for that as well, because you can quickly swap to T0 abilities for the cheapest and most consistent Snake Eye Ring proc. Now at number 8 we have something that's a bit more difficult to gain than a tier 0 ability and that is the Warped Mantle. Which is an armor that drops from the Sulfurous Wetlands boss, the treasure room from the dungeon, and two other silly enemies within the dungeon. This is an armor that's wieldable by melees and gives you 16 defense and 6 vitality, which honestly kind of sucks because the defense is equal to a T8 or T9 armor, but the great thing about it is the passive effect. When in combat and shooting, you get healing for 4 seconds with a 10 second cooldown. So basically as long as you get hit for like 30 damage and you're shooting, you heal for 80 HP over 4 seconds every 10 seconds. Just leave your auto shoot on and you'll be healing health like no tomorrow. You can actually use this armor as a swap out when you need HP, as long as you've been hit by a shot dealing enough damage to get you into combat, you can quickly swap to the warped mantle, and even if you swap back a second after, you'll still gain that healing effect for the next 4 seconds, and then you can use that again after the cooldown's done. Since the healing effect is applied by other paladins and priests, if there's enough of them around, the armor's passive is kinda useless, and it can be tricky to get this item because the Sulfurous Wetlands can be pretty hard for beginners. This item is actually tradable, so you can go to the Realm Eye trading site to see the listed offers, or you can go in-game to find a loaded server where people are currently trading within it. These servers do change often, like for example now it's US East or US East 2, but if you can join my Discord you can ask what the current trading server is and any other questions or help that you might need or if you just want to join a cool community. You can also find the blueprint to create these uh, warped mantles from the Sulfurous Wetlands bosses. And this item costs 45 gold, 90 silver, 400 forge fire, and one Sulfurous Wetlands mark to craft, which honestly is pretty damn cheap. But yeah, if you find this dungeon too tough, don't worry. The other items on this list are all easier to get, especially the next one. Number seven, which is subscribing to me. Because not only am I going to make heaps of guides in the future that you will enjoy, but they'll also help you become a better player. And you already watch so many of my videos anyway, and it's free, so you might as well. Wait, that's not an item. The real number 7 is the ST Lever Armor from the Cave of a Thousand Treasures, which is called the Ornate Armor. And this is basically the Warped Mantle for Lever Classes. This one has a slightly better stat line at 15 defense and 10 vitality, but has a slightly weaker passive, where it gives you healing for 5 seconds instead of 6, when taking at least 20 damage with a cooldown of 20 seconds. So the cooldown's a bit longer as well. So you can't just swap to this item really quickly to gain its effect like you can with the Warped Mantle, but who can be bothered microing that much anyway? And the big upside of this level is that it's much easier to get. It drops from the boss from the Cave of a Thousand Treasures, which is one of the easiest dungeons and bosses in the game. The only tricky thing about getting this armor is that the dungeon itself is kind of rare. It has a really low drop rate from the Dejins in the Godlands. You can also gain the key for opening this dungeon by trading in some really easy beginner marks to the Tinkerer. At least it feels like this item has a really high drop rate from the boss when you do find the dungeon. And from the same boss, we have the incredible sixth item on this list, the Cave of a Thousand Treasures Mark. Yes, I'm being serious, bro. Usually marks suck, 
It's a mechanic that feels like it was added to the game for the sole purpose of pressuring you to buy more vault slots, because none of the quests are reasonable to complete with the vault space that a beginner has. And even to farm for the marks for a quest in the day that it's offered to you is not worth going out of your way for, unless you were planning to farm a particular dungeon that day and it's a quest by coincidence. I recommend ignoring marks in general to resist Decker's evil temptations of buying more vault slots, except for the one that gives you the Cave of a Thousand Treasures key if you do want that lever armor, and for the one relating to the overpowered sixth item on this list, the Treasure Cave Mark. There's three reasons why I have this at number six. One, the dungeon is extremely easy to do. Two, unlike other quests of the same tier, this quest only requires one mark instead of four to six marks. And three, the quest rewards you with a mighty quest chest, which can give you tier 12 weapons, tier 13 armors, tier 5 rings, and tier 6 abilities, also known as O2 tops, because that was the first ever boss to drop these items. And it also gives you greater stat pots, including life and mana, and heaps of good whites and STs. But, and this is unique to this quest, it also gives you a loot boost and a loot tier potion. Loot boost potions simply boost your loot rate by 50% for 30 minutes, but loot tier potions are a newbie's wet dream. What this does is that it boosts the tier of dropped items by free for 30 minutes if the boss can drop that tier, but it doesn't work for items higher tier than O2 tops. Speaking of O2 tops, that's actually the fifth entry on this list. These items are nothing to rave about for endgame players, but they're so easy to get difficulty and time-wise that I think they should be a goal to obtain for new players. And as the name suggests, they're the easiest to get from Oryx 2. But hold on, to continue with the loot tier potion rant, a great time to use this is before O2, because that boss is quite easy to get soulbound on, and the tiered gear that it drops is frequent and great. So yeah, you can pop it just before the boss dies for stonks, or you can risk it a bit and pop it before Janus, who also has good tiered drops, like it can drop tier 5 health rings and tier 11 weapons and tier 12 armors. And you know what, my favorite Oryx 2 top is actually the Exa HP, which is actually number 4 on this list. Well actually, number 4 on this list is HP rings in general, because they're damn great for beginners. The HP stat in general helps beginners so much because it's the limit where players can test how far they can YOLO before they need to get to safety. It also prevents you from getting insta-popped. I mean, it, it can still happen, just less chance to do so. And the best way to get hit points is from health rings because the other stats from the same tiered ring sucks. Like for example, for tier four rings, it can either give you 120 HP or seven of a single stat, like Dex or Wiz or Death, which is garbage. It's really easy to get a beefy HP ring as well, like the superior HP ring. Easiest way to farm this is by killing these goblin guys on the side of Godlands. Just walk around the outskirts of Godlands, kill enough of these guys, and you're basically guaranteed to get one quite quickly. If you want T4 HP rings, the easiest way to get one is to buy one from the Nexus shop for a thousand fame, which I think is worth it. Just please, whatever you do, do not spend gold on these items. It is so not worth it. Otherwise, you can also get para HP from the gods of Godlands, bosses from the dungeons from Godlands, and some of the minions within them, and also from realm events. Or T5 rings. You can get this from O2, of course, but you can also get it from the dungeons that drop from the realm events. As long as they're not the exaltation dungeons, you want to avoid those as a beginner. And they also drop from the bosses from the dungeons that have a guaranteed spawn, like the crab from Deadwater Docks, the owl from Woodlands Labyrinth, and the moth from Sulfurous Wetlands. And yeah, finally, if you do want the tier 6 HP ring, the Underbound HP ring, you do have to do exalted dungeons for them, the easiest being the cult from the Lost Halls, but yeah, this is a lot more tough, so I would avoid them for now. Keep in mind, all tiered rings are tradable as well, so you can use realmy.com or the trading server. Okay, number three is extremely broken, but really easy to get. It's HP pots. Again, I'm not trolling you, I'm being dead serious. 
HP pots are so insane because you can spam all of them that you're holding almost instantly. Like for example, if you have six in your consumable slots, you can really easily spam them by using your quick slot key for an almost 600 HP. In my eyes, it's almost like increasing your maximum HP by 600. So try your best to fill up all of your slots with HP pots, including your backpack slots. Now, when you do this with just the standard HP pots, it gives you a small 1400 HP, which is probably triple your HP pool. So yeah, whenever missing HP pots, I strongly recommend filling back up. You can do this really easily by going into your guild hall, just type in HP, and he drops two chests with four health pots each. Then you just have to re-enter to ask for more. You can abuse the health pots even further by filling your second slot. Now you can't also put the standard health pots in the second slot if they're already in the first consumable slot. So you have to go to this cracked dungeon called the spider den to find a different kind of health pot called the spider icle, which instead is 50% stronger. So it heals 150 HP. It's really easy to find. Just go to the midland, which is the area that you're in after crossing the first road when moving from the beach. The floor of the midlands looks like these. And you see set pieces like the Fibbin Jungle, Temple, and the Ents. You can usually see players on the minimap already in this area. They usually split off by themselves, and you can teleport them to be right there. This dungeon drops from the tiny red spiders, pedo bears, red and white dots. When in the spider den, every spider that isn't green has a chance to drop the spider icon. And the chest and boss has guaranteed Ica drops. By the way, quick side tip for beginners. This is a great dungeon to do on brand new characters. You really easily find T4 and T5 items and those healing consumables. When you do fully fill up your second consumable slot with spider ikers and replace your backpack with them, your total amount that you could heal within a few seconds is 2200 HP. Tell me that's not dumb. If you like healing, you're going to love number two on this list, which is the water silk robe. This is a wearable armor by Staff and Wand Classes and the Bard, and it drops from Nakao, the Azua Dragon, who is in the Lair of Draconis, which is a dungeon that drops from the Rock Dragon inside of the realm. The robe gives 6 attack, 13 defense, 6 speed, and 5 vitality, which I like more than the armors from Sulfurous Wetlands and the Treasure Cave, but the best part of it is its passive effect. When you're under 75% HP, every 15 seconds you heal 100 HP and you gain 3 seconds of healing. This passive item effect is the strongest one that an item has in the game, and it has great stats. The only issue with this one is that it might be the hardest item on this list to acquire initially. Not because the boss is hard or anything, it's actually really easy, it's just the item has a rare drop rate. And Lair of Draconis itself is a dungeon that you don't come across very often, because rock dragons only spawn once per realm, maybe twice. But the dungeon is a must do for beginner and mid game players, because the dungeon drops heaps of potions, you can get 12 stats in general from just one of these dungeons, and it's got so many strong potential upgrades. There's 12 on average good mid game white bags and ST bags, and tiered upgrades as well like the coveted T5 HP ring. You can actually increase the chance of getting the water silk robe from a set layer of Draconis with a mechanic that many players don't know about, where the later that you fight a set dragon, it actually increases the drop rate for it. So if you leave the blue dragon till last, or till second last because you're forced to fight the white one last, it maximizes the chance of you getting a water silk robe from that set layer of Draconis. Also, just like the Paramount HP ring, you can actually buy the blueprints to create this robe in the future from the shops for 6,825 fame, which I think is worth it. Now, this item is quite tough to craft. It costs you a lot of mark, 720 forge fire, and most tough is the 90 gold and 120 silver materials, but it's so worth to save up for. And just like the warped mantle, you don't always have to wear the robe to gain its passive effect. You can just swap to it every 15 seconds as long as you're under 75 HP and it's basically a reusable health pot that gives you an instant 100 health and 3 seconds of healing right away. And last, but not least, the number one slot on this list, the Q-Band Ring. 
The Q-Band Ring drops from Lyman, the boss from the Sprite World. And this should always be a dungeon that's a staple for beginners anyway, because it's the easiest way to get dexterity potions by far, and so because of this, it's the easiest consistent way to increase your damage, until you have max dexterity. And also it does drop nice tiered items for the dungeon's difficulty, and two great white bags. One for Rogue and one for Summoner. Now the Q-Band Ring is amazing. The drop rate is like 1 in 100 to 1 in 200 from experience, but it's worth the grind. But let's get into what it really is. The stats are 80 health and 5 dex. Nothing too amazing, but respectable, but the passive ability is where it really shines. It gives you 100 health every 20 seconds while you're in combat. So this is another item that you can just swap to really quickly for a quick reusable health pot basically. Now I know the water silk robe has a better passive, but the fact that this is a ring that's so accessible because it's usable on any class and droppable from an extremely easy boss that you should be farming anyway is why that this item is the best item for beginners in Realm of the Mad God. Guys on screen I have a link to a video. Also if you want to support the channel consider supporting me on Patreon. It's these guys on screen that are keeping me undeceased to continue me making content for you. There's heaps of benefits to gain depending on the level of support you choose. So thank you guys all so much for your continued support, even if you just watch my videos. Subscribe, like, comment, peace, I love you.